In this mini lecture, we're going to talk about activity of the sun that happens above its surface. But first, before we get there, let's sort of summarize a little bit about what we've learned about the sun so far. How the dynamo generated field makes its way to the surface and beyond is this little graphic right here. And so this is um, quite old and dated, but it still does the job of telling the story. Okay, so we've got that rope of magnetism created by the dynamo inside the sun's surface. It's rising through the convection zone, intersecting with the photosphere to form our two sunspots, our sunspot pairs. Okay, so you've got this loop of magnetism like the magnetic field from a bar or a horseshoe magnet, and that magnetic field is like a rubber band. Okay, so it can snap and twist and it can break off. And whenever it does that, it releases a lot of energy and then you spew out <laughs> this tangled cloud of magnetic field and charged particles with a lot of energy. And then that um, travels through the solar system and sometimes it impacts the earth, okay? And the, um, that's um, a little bit more of the story about what happens um, with the sun and its magnetism as it impacts our solar system. So here we're gonna talk about a few more features that we can see on the sun's, above the sun's surface. And this is what we call a prominence. So, um, and here's the earth for scale. This is, this object here is a prominence. It's cool, dense gas suspended above the solar surface by loops of magnetic field. Just like how iron shavings are attracted to loops of magnetism, gas in the sun's upper atmosphere is attracted to these magnetic field lines. And that gas sort of, hangs out around near these magnetic field lines and that's what we're seeing right here. So we're not seeing the magnetic fields themselves because they're invisible but we're seeing the gas that's attracted to those field lines right here in this giant loop. These things called prominences can extend from the surface up into the sun's corona, the sun's outermost atmosphere. They can be stable on the sun's surface for a few days up to a few months and their foot points are located in sunspot regions. And then we have a flare. So a flare is the event that we're gonna see right here. So there was a bright flash of light right here whenever that loop of magnetism popped off the sun's surface. A flare is a sudden intense brightening near the sun's surface. Um, with a flare event, you have ejected magnetic clouds of electrons, ions, and atoms. And these flare events, when they occur on the sun, they're sending out this um, cloud of magnetism charged particles to the sun. And then um, these can reach the Earth in about one to two days. Okay. It takes a while for those to travel through space. They're not traveling at the speed of light. And um, the energy associated with the flare, flares happen whenever the sun has built up a lot of stored magnetic energy and it needs to be released. Um, so there's a lot of energy associated with this release okay, of stored magnetism. Um, and the energy associated with these flare events can be um, around 10 to the 20 to 10 to the 25 joules. Joules are a unit of energy, um, and this is equivalent to 1 billion megatons of TNT going off at one time. Hmm, pretty extreme. So here's an example of a flare. I'm going to show you play this movie. We'll see an example of a flare and what we call a coronal mass ejection. A coronal mass ejection is an ejection of, of material um, from these giant loops of magnetism that are extended up into the corona. And so um, this is an event that happened in 2011. So you're taking the sun and turned it on its sides. These would be the band of sunspots on either side of the sun's equator. And then we've got loops of magnetism coming out of those bands of sunspots here. So I'm going to play this. Um, so this is a, a, a video. We've got a loop of magnetism. And over here, this loop of magnetic field is gonna rise above the sun's surface and it's gonna release, okay? Um, it's gonna release a lot of energy. This is all material spewing off of the sun's surface, okay? And so the material ejected from this flare event is equivalent to um, a lot of energy. It's equivalent, the mass was equivalent to about the mass of Mount Everest that released here. And you see, you saw, saw some of that material rained back down to the sun is raining back down to the sun and impacting the sun's surface. But most of that material went hurtling off into space in the direction of, you know, other planets in our solar system. So next we're going to talk about the corona and what was that coronal mass ejection. 
So the corona is the thin atmosphere of the sun, um, 10 to the minus 12 times as dense as the surface. This is what we see during a solar eclipse. So we've already talked about this a little bit. Um, the temperature in the corona can achieve one to three million degrees Kelvin, which is crazy because the surface of the sun is only about 6,000 Kelvin, right? So even though we're leaving from the sun's core and decreasing in temperature as we make our way to the photosphere, once we pass the photosphere and go beyond that, we start to increase our temperature again, um, which was really confusing, but we think it has a lot to do with magnetic fields that exist in the corona and sun's upper atmosphere. Um, so the corona extends many millions of kilometers into space. It fills up a large region around the sun. And here's what we call a coronal mass ejection. So we're seeing here, these, all these little events that are happening here, the sun is in the middle. And this video here shows an example of a coronal mass ejection. We've got the sun, which is that white circle in the middle. And the, we're watching this with a space-based telescope. And the space telescope has a little disk in the middle that's blocking out all the light from the sun's center. So we can see the sun's corona. And then we can see these events called coronal mass ejections. So there, 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 those were all coronal mass ejections. They are releases of plasma and magnetic field from the solar corona. They often follow flares or prominence eruptions. And these coronal mass ejections are going to travel through the solar system. And um, they often will strike our planet and they will disrupt our magnetosphere. That's that magnetic field that's surrounding our Earth and protecting it from events like this coming from the sun. Here's a computer simulation of the magnetic field in the sun's corona. So the sun is that black sphere in the middle, and around it are these loops of magnetism that are magnetic fields that extend up into the sun's corona. And so you see the, the loop structure within, um, these, uh, within these coronal loops. Um, and you see that kind of um, at the edges of these coronal loops and these way up here, um, you get the tips of them are kind of pulled out and pointed a little bit. They're kind of pointy out here. And we call these streamers. And so the reason why those loops get sort of drawn out and pulled to a point is because there's material streaming off of the sun's surface and we call that material the solar wind. The solar wind moving past these coronal loops is stretching um, those loops out to a point at the end. And so these loops can extend many, many, many times the sun's radius away from the sun's surface. And um, so this is what you would see during the solar, you know, solar eclipse or with telescopes whenever we observe the solar corona if we black out the central disk of the sun here. Um, so in this simulation, we've got the sun rotating, and so we can see what the uh, coronal loops are going to look like from all different angles. So this figure shows us um, the temperature of the sun from the photosphere to beyond. So the photosphere, that's our sun's surface. Here's the height above the surface here. Here's the temperature in Kelvin. So at the photosphere, um, we're, our temperature is right here. This is a logarithmic scale. Our temperature is right here. We go into the chromos chromosphere, which is that layer just above the photosphere, the temperature increases. And then right here, we encounter something that we call the transition region in the sun's atmosphere. At that region, we have this incredible jump in temperature from the upper part of the chromosphere all the way up to the lower part of the corona. Okay, and then just that small space, that small distance above the sun's surface, we have um, an increase in temperature from about 10,000 Kelvin all the way up to almost a million Kelvin. And what's causing such an extreme change in temperature over such a small distance? Well, why is the sun's corona so hot? We think it has something to do with magnetic fields. Well, I've already briefly mentioned the solar wind, but the solar wind is a stream of particles that flow outward and away from the sun. Typical speeds of the solar wind are about 250 to 800 kilometers per second. So here's a plot of the solar wind around the sun. So here we have the sun. We see that the solar wind is not very strong 
um, near the equator of the sun. Near the equator of the sun, you have those more of those big loops of magnetism extended above the sunspot regions. And those loops of magnetism tend to keep some of the material from flowing outward and away from the sun. But then as you get more toward the poles, um, this, the magnetic field lines for the sun are more open up into space. So imagine inside the sun, we also have one of these giant bar magnets and um, the magnetic field from the north region is coming out, the magnetic field from the south region is coming out. So those magnetic field lines are more open into space. At some point, those magnetic field lines have to arch over and, and enter into the other hemisphere of the sun. But material is more easy to stream along those what we call open magnetic field lines where you don't have those little loops of magnetism closer to the surface. And so that's why we have faster solar wind up near the poles is because of these open magnetic field lines versus these closed loops of magnetism um, closer to the equator down here. Here's another example of the solar wind. So the solar wind is streaming out and away from the sun, but the sun is also rotating. So as that material is spinning out and away from the sun and as the sun is rotating, the solar wind actually creates a pattern kind of like sometimes we refer to as the ballerina skirt pattern, where the ballerina has this beautiful big skirt and she spins and it starts to twirl a little bit. Or you can think about um, like what happens when the water shoots out of a sprinkler, okay? The sprinkler is spinning, the water coming out makes this curved path. That's the same path that the solar wind is following as it moves through our solar system. So um, here in this, in this figure, we've got the sun and we have two satellites here and here, two spacecrafts called stereo. And then we've got the earth right here in green. So um, the sun is spinning and what we're seeing is a map of the solar wind coming off of the sun, okay? The stream of particles coming off of the sun. So as the sun spins, that solar wind filling our solar system makes the sort of curved pattern as the sun is spinning around in this direction. This figure is us looking down on our solar system from above. And so the color is the density of the plasma, the density of the material that's coming off of the um, sun with the solar wind. And so you can see that some of these radial outflows of plasma from the sun filling out our solar system, some of them are have um, a higher density of material than others. So the ones that are more colorful have a higher density of material. And so sometimes these radial outflows, these swirling radial outflows from the sun are going to sweep past the earth. Okay, and whenever it does that, actually we tend to see more aurora than northern and southern lights because the particles from the sun like to fall along the Earth's magnetic field lines towards our Earth's poles and interact with our Earth's upper atmosphere to release those beautiful colors of the aurora. So this image is looking at the solar wind from our sun in our solar system from above, and this little wedge here is us looking at it um, from the side. So we can move it, us looking at it from the side right here, okay? This is uh, the top view, and then this is if we turn it to the side and, and slice it on the side. And so then we can see, you know, that's our little earth. Uh, we, we feel the effects of the sun's um, solar wind. We also will feel the effects of these coronal mass ejections moving throughout our solar system. So right now, there's a spacecraft called the Parker Solar Probe, which is this spacecraft right here. And it is traveling around the sun, and in uh, 2024, it is going to sweep in and be the closest to the sun that any other spacecraft has ever has ever been before. It's literally going to be flowing or traveling through the sun's corona, and it's going to take measurements. It's currently taking data right now um, about the magnetic field in the sun's corona, about the solar wind, to help us better understand why does the solar corona get so dang hot and what accelerates the solar wind. Um, so we already have gotten some uh, data back from the spacecraft, and it's telling us that the magnetic field of the sun's uh, corona is much more complicated than we thought. It sort of folds and bends over on itself, and we think that that kind of folding and bending of the magnetism in the sun's corona helps to accelerate the material in the sun's corona keep it hotter, and um, that's maybe what's contributing to the sun's corona being so dang hot.